In this lesson, we're going to be adding the animation for our camera with our line graph. Okay, so I went ahead and finished up the animation of the dots and the numbers popping on. So now what I want to do is add some camera animation. So let's just go ahead and scrub forward a bit here, and I'm going to zoom in really close on the numbers. So just kind of bring that in here. And let's go ahead and set a keyframe just right there at that first position. And I'm going to pull it forward just a bit so that our camera can stay here for just a second because of the way that that uh, comp is going to look on the outside. So we'll just scrub forward to right about here where we can start to see where that dot is. And we'll move that over and up so that the dot is right there on the crosshair for our title action safe. So I'm just kind of staggering these a little bit, just a few frames into the animation. So you can see this moves down here. So it's just a few frames into the animation of that 57%. So let's just do maybe two frames. So it's almost like our camera's just trying to catch up with it. Then we'll come up to this one, go two frames into this, go back up to the camera, and we'll just move this like that, just to be right there in the middle. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, you just want it to be close, but this is going to be moving very quickly. Um, so there's going to be probably quite a bit of motion blur in a moment. And let's just come over to this one, we'll move forward two frames. And our camera needs to dip down a little bit to be able to see this one. We'll just put that right there in the middle, the crosshair of the title action safe. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, this is all moving really quickly, and I want to add uh, some motion blur just so you can see how fast that's going to move. So we we'll just turn on enable motion blur for all layers, and you can see that's pretty fast. So now once we switch over from this point where the line starts to go a lot more quickly, I want the camera just to kind of zoom back and be able to see the whole thing. So let's pull this back just on our Z value. Just pull that camera back. Move this down. Move it over a little bit. I'm just repositioning this inside of that title action safe grid. Pull that back a little bit farther. It's still just a little bit too big. Be right in there. And then let's just move this down a little bit. Just like that. So now it's right inside of that box. Perfect. And I'm going to scoot this over a little bit farther to the left than to be right inside that inner box because we're going to add another small graphic over here on the side. So let's just do a RAM preview, just kind of ending right here. Just hit the end key to trim that work area. And we'll watch this and just see what it looks like. Really, really nice. So now we're able to see kind of all of those happening at once like it was earlier, but we still have that really nice dynamic movement at the beginning. It does appear that worry about global warming is on the rise, but only it does appear that worry. Now, one thing that I would like to kind of take into consideration is at this point, I missed that peak animation because of how slowly this is going. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit so that we can see that peak when it hits because I think that one is really powerful. So we'll just have our camera movement end a little bit sooner than we were thinking it would originally. So just like that. And we can ease into this last movement too. In fact, we want all of the camera movements to have some ease. So let's go ahead and select all those camera keyframes, go up to animation, keyframe assistant, and choose easy ease. 
And then this last one, I want it to be a super slow ease. So we'll grab our graph editor and just pull this handle out. Now let's watch another RAM preview to see how that changed. But only it does appear that worry about global warming is on the rise. Okay, so this looks pretty good. It's probably a little bit too fast right here, just because to get that super slow ease, we have that kind of as an issue. So let's go ahead and go back into the graph editor and just not pull that out quite so far so we don't get such a um, crazy spike in that speed. We'll just watch this part through one more time just to see that it movement. It does appear that worry about global warming is on the rise, but only it does appear that worry about global warming is on the rise. Okay, so I think that that looks pretty good. If you wanted to, you could even come into this keyframe right here and maybe start pulling it back just a little bit more. So that's just going to help to um, even that out so that doesn't have to be so fast. So it starts zooming out here and then we get a lot more zoom and that's just not so fast at this point right here because we already have a little bit of that backwards zoom a little bit earlier. Okay, so I think this is looking really good. We've got our camera animation moving really nicely. The timing looks good. And the, it's moving along really nicely with the layers that have been animated here. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that the line graph doesn't look like it has any motion blur on it. So let's go ahead and switch that on. You can see that adds just a little bit of a feather to the tip of that line. Just makes it look a little bit better. Okay, so now what I want to do is add just a little bit more um, interest to this by having the actual graph not fade on till our camera is at that final point. So we won't actually see the lines and the dates until the camera's fully zoomed back because we can't really even appreciate those lines and those dates anyway. So I'm gonna just pull my current time indicator onto that last frame of the camera's movement. And let's just go ahead and pull that up. So we've got our text up here uh, that's basically the label for the graph. And we don't really ever see that before it's necessary. So we can just go ahead and leave that on. But we will come in here and just down here at the bottom where we've got our dates and our graph, I want those to just be masked on really quickly. Um, so what we can do is just select both of those and we'll pre-comp them so that we can mask them with just using one mask. So I'll go ahead and we'll hit Control Shift C and we'll call this line graph dates. Go ahead and say OK. And we can just pull this forward because we don't want it to begin until this point. We'll also turn on our collapse transformation so it's the right size. And then we'll just come in here with our mask rectangle tool. And you want to make sure you have that layer selected. And we'll draw a box all the way around all of those values. Then we'll come down here to our mask and just set a keyframe for the mask path. Pull that forward. Then we can grab our selection tool and double click the mask and pull it backwards so that it's hidden until that point. So you can see that's going to slowly start to come out just like that. And let's have this happen maybe a little bit more quickly than the actual line graph. So let's just do this over about 15 frames. So I'll hold shift and hit page down and pull that forward. Let's have it have a really slow ease in here at the end. So I'll hit F9, go into my graph editor and we'll pull that handle backwards. Let's just watch your in preview to see this all coming together. It does appear that worry about global warming is on the rise, but only it does. So that looks pretty good. And I think we could add some motion blur to this layer just to make that look a little bit better with that feather. Let's watch that. It does appear that worry about global warming is on the rise, but only it does. Really nice. So it's coming in there pretty fast, but I think that that looks pretty good. It just kind of animates along with that line. And then let's just really quickly go ahead and add that last graphic that I was talking about for the 6%. So I'm just going to scrub through here holding control. But only 
since 2009. Okay, so if it's 6% since 2009, that's going to be starting right here. So let's just do a little curly bracket out to the right of this that looks like it's measuring up from 58 down to 52. So I'm just going to do that with a text, uh, just a, a text layer. And we can use Adobe Garamond because it has a really pretty curly bracket. And on my computer to type a curly bracket, I'll just hold shift and hit the end bracket key. And then we'll select that and let's choose that. Um, let's go ahead and choose that teal blue color. So we'll need to go back out to that main coral infographic and grab one of our pieces. So that teal color is going to be right there. We'll just do a control C to copy that. And then let's just paste it up here at the top just like that. Okay, so grab your curly bracket again, eyedropper, and grab that color. So you can see what that looks like. And let's crank that up to bold so it's just a little bit heavier. Then we can make it bigger so you can see what that looks like. Now let's zoom in a bit. And I'm going to have this end right where that 52 is. So let's grab our anchor point and pull it down right there into that corner. And then we can just scale it down so that it's the height of 58. So perfect, right there. And then let's just type in a 6% and put this over to the side. So I want it to be close to the same size. So rather than retyping it and needing to size it up, I'll just duplicate that curly bracket layer by hitting Control D. We can pull this over. And then we'll just overwrite that by typing in 6%. And that's going to be too big, so we'll make it a little bit smaller. And we don't need 400 points of tracking. So I just took that back down to a 0. And maybe make this just a bit smaller still. So it's still a more important number than these numbers here, but you can see it's just not quite as... Um, not quite as large as it was earlier. And I want to go ahead and animate this on as he says 6%. So let's control scrub to hear that. So right there he's about to say 6%. So we'll have our curly bracket pop on. And let's just do a scale animation. Now because this isn't at 100% we can't use our user preset but we have a pretty good idea of how to set that up. So I'll just trim the layer hit the S key to bring that up, pull that forwards, take it down to zero at the beginning, and let's just have this happen over 10 frames. You can see this is a pretty large comp. And let's go back about three frames, and we'll take that up a little bit bigger than it's actually going to be. So that's at 68.3. So we get that nice recoil. And I'm not really happy with where the anchor point is now because that's controlling the scale. So I want it to scale out from the middle. So we can just grab that pan behind anchor point tool again and move that up. And let's do the same thing for the 6%. So it's going to scale out from the side just kind of like the curly bracket just spit that right out. And we'll have that come on right as the curly bracket is finishing its or beginning that recoil. So I'll just trim the 6% here, hit the S key to bring up the scale, and we'll do this over 10 frames also. And we'll move backwards 3 and add a little bit of recoil. Let's see, that was at 36.7, so let's just put this at 39. Scrub through that. Very nice. And let's listen to it. Only 6% since 2009. Really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and select all of those keyframes and hit F9 to make them easy eased. And let's just take a look at this. Really nice. Okay, so I'm going to turn off that little teal piece that we had and we'll also go down here and turn off our background just like that. So now in our main camera 
our excuse me, our main infographic, we'll be able to not have that background just pop on like that. You'll notice that this is overlapping just a little bit now. So what I'd like to do is just add a scale animation to make the whole thing smaller of this line graph animation comp. And then right about here where this starts to uh, overlap with the top of the comp, we need it to be at 100%. So we'll go ahead and open up your scale property for that line graph animation. Hit your stopwatch and we'll move backwards and take it down to zero. Now the reason why you need this to be at 100 by the time that that overlaps is because you'll start to see the cutoff there and if you try to collapse your transformations you're going to get all kinds of problems. So we'll take this down to zero there at the beginning and now you see the overlap is just a little bit less And that really is a nice transition from the bottom of that word to coming in to this graph. And something else nice that we could do at this point is just as the camera kind of stops moving, we could start to scale this comp down because we don't have any more overlap. So that's going to be, let's see, right about here. Let's just do a really slow scale down of this whole comp. So it feels like the camera is still moving backwards. So we'll just scale it down to right about there. And you can see that's just really, really nice and slow. Now let's see where we need this to end. So I'm just going to pull that back. We'll hit a period. And overall, it's much lower than it's been in the past. So you may ask, what are some of the costs that have been in the past? So right about here where he says pass, that's where that last keyframe needs to be. So it is going to be very, very gradual, but it's nice to have just that little bit of movement instead of just having it sit statically on the comp. And the only other thing I would change at this point is that this feels like it's a little bit far over to the left. So let's go back in here. Let's turn off our title action safe select our camera, come over here to our camera movements, just sit on any one of those positions, select all those keys, and then come over here to your X value, and we'll just bump the whole thing over a little bit to the left. So to fix that, we're just going to come over here to our last camera's key, fr our camera's last keyframe, and we'll move this over to the right a little bit by dragging the camera position to the left. Let's just pull that out. That looks pretty good. The 6% isn't moving with us, so we probably shouldn't go quite that far. So let's go ahead and come back in here and just tweak that a little bit, just maybe right about there. And then we can grab the 6% and its bracket and just scoot that over. So that's going to probably look just a little bit more balanced on the outside. If we come back out here, that just looks a little bit more centered than what we had before. So really, really easy, just kind of time consuming because you have so many repetitive things to do. But overall, I think this turned out really nicely. And in our next lesson, we're going to transition from this graph to our question, which is kind of the next thing he says um, about what's being done to, uh, what, or really what causes the damage um, overall to these coral reefs. So then we'll go into kind of some of those reasons. But the next thing we need to do is just get that question text on our comp. So we'll learn how to do that in our next lesson.